Hi everyone, it's Kim from JustWords.ca. I'm finally back into the craft room. It's been a while. I've had a few things happen in my life that uh, has taken me away from the crafting room. But um, I'm starting out. I have a commission card I have to do for a co-worker. And I thought I would color it up and show you my process. And what better um, to start back with an image that's starting a new life. And this is a Make It Crafty image and I love the series of, of these uh, beautiful digital stamps. And the papers, you can see my papers that I've picked here. And this was from uh, Doodlebug Designs and it's Snips and Snails is the paper pack that I am using today with a little bit of solid uh, cardstock behind it. So let us move these papers. So as you can see the, um, hang on, let me move this over a little bit here. I have browns, yellows, blues, turquoises, and um, those are the colors I'm going to try and incorporate on the, uh, the card here. So let us begin. Let me move aside. Oh, I have to show you these cute little, but these at Michael's, the cutest little, um, animal uh, brads. I think that's what you call them. So I'm going to use some of those. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how it all turns out near the end. So I'm just moving that aside and I am going to start on face and I always like using coral, sun-kissed pink, blush, I have antique pink and baby pink for cheeks and lips. So let us start with the coral. And I'm going to do the, the girl first here. Now the thing I like about these series of images is they're, they're not too crazy in detail that they're too hard to, they take a long time to color. They tend to go a little faster than something with a lot of detail. I always like working dark to light. I'm just blending my colors here. I'm going to put a little bit of that baby pink on her mouth, her lips here. And I could probably I could probably add a little blush to her eyes, but I, I think I'm just gonna leave it as that. And then we're gonna get her neck here. I work in little small areas so that the ink stays a little bit moist. It lends to blending a little bit better. In my experience anyway, I got a little bit in her mouth here, so I'm just using my blender pen to try and push it out a little bit, push it back where it belongs. Okay, so now let us move to her hands. Like I said, I work dark to light and it's just, the reason for that is I don't like to um, layer too much ink because my paper that I use, which is Nina Solar White Classic, um, 80 pound paper, and I'm hoping someone had sent me some uh, heavier paper, which is uh, I think 110 pound, works a little bit better, holds more ink. So what's happened with me 
is if I color it all in the lightest color, like some Copic instructors do, um, and then start blending and go over and over, my paper will bleed, will bleed color. So you have to find the paper that is going to work well for your coloring style. And there are many on the market and it all depends on where you live. It's best to maybe try and get on a Facebook group that um, most people are very, very helpful on finding something that's in your area. So now I just added a little more shading here because I lost a little bit with my blending. To give it a little more dimension and I am going to take a little bit just a little of my pink there on, the, on her tummy it's very barely noticeable but cute now we're going to work on the boy and I am going to try and get His skin slightly darker than the girl's, so I might be very, um, not use as much blush as I would for the girl. I know both of these um, people, and they are very fair skinned. Okay. Trying to get that skin, like I said, a little bit darker. It's only my personal preference. Whatever you like and whatever whatever skin tones you might be dealing with. So how quick was that? The skin is already done. So I am now going to work on the hair. And I'm going to throw a few Copics in here this time around. She has blonde hair. So I'm going to do E55, E53, and E50. And hopefully we can make it light. I'm just trying to add that a little bit of the darkest color where the artist has drawn. There's not much hair here, so I'm trying to I'm just going to do that whole section at one time. extending those lines being very feather light as much as I can It looks 
more of a super light brown so I think I'm going to add a little bit of my buttercup which is a pool marker and yes pool markers work well with Copics I'm going to also get my mustard which is also a pool marker That gives me more of a yellow tinge than I want. Get that buttercup again. but I think I'm just going to grab my raw sienna wanted a little more definition in here. It's taking me a little longer than I anticipated, but I think that will do. So we're going to get the other side of her hair here, and I'm going to start with the, the right colors here. My raw sienna, I think, is kaputied. I'm going to get that Copic uh, E55 because I really want to make sure I have some of those same tones that I had in here. And then I'm going to put my mustard over top of that. And then we're going to get that buttercup. Got my dog hair in here. I don't know how I've done that. She's done. Now he is more of brown hair, so I am going to use E59, E57, and E55. Now again, you can use your pro markers, any color combination that you like. Now there's not much to his hair, so I'm just adding a few flicks here and there of the darkest color. And then we're going to go lighter. And then we're going to go that lightest color, which is E55. And there we have it. Now, as far as his shirt, I am going to do it in the... See, I was going to, right off the bat, go yellows, but I can tell you that he probably isn't kind of the guy that would wear yellow. So, I wonder what color. I'm thinking greens. So, we're going to pass on the greens right now, but I'm going to work on his pant legs here. So, the colors I pulled for here is I have Midnight. I also have B50, uh, B93, B91, and Y21. Whoops. There you go. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to attempt, not that I've ever done this before, but I did see this. Just in the shadows. And you can tell where the artist has put all the little scuff marks. I just want these jeans to kind of look as if they've been really worn, a little bit on the scruffy side. 
that's the plan, but we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so now I have my Midnight Blue, which I'm going to add here. I'm not sure if this is going to be a success or not, but we'll... We'll play it by year. Okay, and then I'm going to get that B93. Now you could have used, um, I think I like um, denim. That's what I'm trying to say. If you have denim in the pro markers, that would be a good color to use. And then I'm going to take my lightest color. I don't know if you like that look or not, but I think it's... I am going over that yellow, but I think it looks kind of worn. I like it. Let's continue on the other side, getting that midnight blue again. a little bit too much of that, so I kind of went over all my yellow here. Now with Copix you will see that it does help if you hold your markers completely upright for better control, but I'm just trying to be able to show you where I'm coloring. So I kind of go to the side so my strokes aren't as nice as they could be. There we are. So they kind of look rough and tumble type pants I'm thinking so now for her pants I'm gonna give her because all mamas to be want to look as slim as they can so I'm gonna go black I'm gonna get, uh, get my black um, pro markers my ice gray 5 and my ice gray 3 and ice gray 1 and we're gonna see what we can do here Now this back side is going to be mostly shadowed, so I'm leaving very little. I'm going to use my one hair, so minimal. And there we are. So now we're going to get the rest here. Let's get 
that I scraped on. And it's a little too light, so I'm going to get my ice cream three. I'm going to get this black again, deepen up these areas. wanted them a little more black than gray so I'm just adding a little bit more to blend these color out here. And there we are. I got a little bit here. I'm gonna push out with my pin which is dry. I gotta find the wet one. I know I have a couple here. Let's try this one. Yep, that one's good. Redo our mouth because I was using the dry one. And I got a little bit here on the pants. All right. So now I think I'm going to give her a pink top. And well, there's no pink in here. I'm wondering maybe a turquoisey color because there is turquoise in the paper. Okay, so the colors I have is turquoise, duck egg, and cool aqua. That's what we're going to try first. Let's see if we like the color. And the only reason why I went away from the pink is because paper has no pink whatsoever. But it might have been a good complementary color, and seeing as she's a girl, it would have been fine anyway, but just thought I'd try and stick to the colors of the of the papers. I just want to do this not very dark. Soften this. Uh, not really color I wanted it, so I'm just gonna add a little bit here. Add a little more shading. be careful here because I did use my blending pan that I might end up get some bleeding that I don't really care for. So I'm adding a little more color. Definitely not as light. As you can see here you can see some little white dots happening here and that's because I oversaturated my paper. So something you can Maybe learn from my mistake. There we are. Okay. So I think, like I said, with his shirt, it was either yellow or green. I've got lots of colors happening here. Yikers. I think I'm going to color his shoes. I'm going to go black because I'm very undecided what I want to do here. So the same colors I used on her pants is what I'm going to use on his shoes. Ok, 
Again, pretty simple to color those up. There's a small area. Went over a little bit. We're going to clean that up. Okay, and I want her runners to be more on the white side, so I'm just going to take my ice gray one. And I think I'm going to take my Cool Aqua and just maybe Of course, that doesn't want to work I'm just going to add a little color here, very gently Now I'm going to grab my papers here because I'm really undecided if I want to throw him in a green shirt or a yellow. And I think if I if I use this bottom color here, I can do a dark brown shirt. That might be better. Okay, we're not going to put green. I'm going to put him in a dark brown shirt. So I'm going to use the same colors I used for his hair. I'm going to predominantly do them in a dark color. So again, E59, E57, E55. Look at how many times I've changed my mind today. So what happens when you first come back into the, the swing of things. It's really hard to get back. Into the swing of things. the Copics when you you paint sideways you end up getting this mess here but it's easy enough to push it back Now, as you can see, I'm, uh, I really want some more depth here, so I'm taking my Ice Gray 5. Trying to create a little bit more depth. And then go over it with that color and it just might give us a little more depth here. 
So I really want it to appear that that arm is going over this part of the, the shirt. Okay, so this is completely finished and I will throw my card together and let you have a peek at it at the end. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you again next time. Take care now. Bye.